like um, Debbie Allen, who worked with us in in, um, in Tijan. Yes, that was my buddy. We used to go ride in bad now with that here. <laughs> we go in all about doing all kind of mischief. She said, "You got to pay your dues, Al." I said, "What do you mean?" She said, "Everybody's got to pay the dues." Uh, so was uh, she talking in the context of the sexism and so on in, in this thing, you know? And I said, um, do you pay the dues? She said, I told you, everybody got to pay the dues. <laughs> One way or the other. We won't go into details about it. But if you want to make it big, you know, it might be for a woman, you have got to take her clothes off and in a nude scene or something. It may be, I don't know, you know. But it's gay, the gay directors are out there too. You know? I mean, I'm not scaring people away. I'm telling the reality. And <laughs> these days it's probably worse. Now that so many people are coming out, as they say, you know? <laughs> so then you came home. <laughs> well, no. I, I did come home. And I said, my agent, because they got me an agent, I had two agents, one in Chicago, one in New York, and they, they had a thing in Hollywood too, you know, a branch. And they, they got me a lot of nice little gigs like modeling and all kinds of things, you know, and commercials. And I worked in um, moment to moment, you know. Um, it's a, a daytime soap, you know. I got to work in those little things because I was, I was astonished that in against the background of 92% people unemployed, I was working every week for the three and a half years that I was there, you know. That was my trump. That was my big thing, you know. <laughs> If I change, my, my agent was telling me, he was also um, Sidney Poitier's agent at one time. And he's saying, um, you got to adapt your accent and stuff, you know. And I said, why? He said, well, Sidney did it. He said, Sidney, Sidney is a American, <laughs> you know. I said, I, I am me and I'm going to be me. You know, I, I'll, I'll get work, you know. And I can work. I, it was not, you know, top. But draw work always, but it was work. You know what? You know what? You know what happened to me when I went. There was a a, a movie. A, what's it called? Um, a musical that was being auditioned for for Broadway. And my agent sent me Via Galactica. That's what it was called. And the director. I was telling the, the kids here the other day this. I did, I, did, I did a little something. I don't remember what. Something from Dream of Monkey Monkey or something. I don't remember. Fine, fine. They like that. And he said, how can we know what your singing voice is like? I didn't have a song. Eh? You're supposed to have a song. You have a music. And it is pianist and sing. But uh, I said, um, uh, I, sing a, I, sing a, I say I'll sing a little ditty for you. So I sing a song. <laughs> I sang a little calypso from... Um, about, and I told them what it was about, about the first time that the um, Ferris wheel came to Trinidad, 1937, and there's this woman who went up on the Ferris wheel and had a most unfortunate uh, experience, and they put it in a calypso, and it went like this, Iris, dearest, you are not the fairest, better you did steal than to pee down the Ferris wheel. I was pretty, <laughs> you know, so I sang that and I was pretending the waterfall from the highest wheel, very tall. After drenching a man with pee, I just pretended it wasn't she. So I. <laughs> so they all laughed and had fun and so on. But of course, if you had names of the big singers who were going in for that, you know, I know I was going to get rolled, you know. But they thanked me and said, oh, we hope you see you again, right? Fine. Um, about. Three weeks later, I was called by the, the same director, whose name I, dis, I don't remember. But he was doing a Derek Walcott play in Hollywood. 
right? And um, Louis Gossett was the actor. So he wanted me to go and coach Louis Gossett in the West Indian dialect and song. And, and he was a Calypsonian or something like that. Charlatan, right. So I got the gig for about six weeks coaching, living the life with the, the stars in, 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 over there. Yes, the Mark Taper Forum. Yes, Gordon, Gordon Davidson was the artistic director at that time. I don't know what he, if he's still alive. He should be, you know. And I used to get some work there too, doing some, you know, all kind of, all kind of things. So what I'm saying is that if you, if you commit yourself to this thing, like the band says, when you, who rides the tiger, there's not this mount. You've got to ride it to the finish, you know. And, and if you have a determination to make it for yourself, yes, there are times you'll be out of work. But so that's the so, hardest thing. That's the hardest thing to communicate because um, talking to young people, what you get is what am I going to do? Who is going to hire me? Yes? And I say, you do all of this. For somebody to hire you, <laughs> I, I would have thought that you did all of this to exist in the world. The mantra that they used to have in in, 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 in the black company is get your act together and take it on the road. But get your act together. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, who are you? About three and a half years. And I went back to do um, Dream in Baltimore for the spring. You know, I had uh, Carol Chappelle and somebody, <laughs> Andrew Bedo with me. Yeah, we went up there and did that. That was, I helped a guy to make his name. <laughs> what was it like to come back here? Coming back, boy, the worst thing, people, <laughs> how much time you have, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Once you, once you come back, you're failing, you know that? Well, of course. Because you come back. Total failure. If you when succeeded, you, back, you, want, you want to come back. Exactly. This is the thing. So you come up, say you're a failure, right? It says, I'm a failure, okay. Um, and that was not only the people outside the theater workshop, you know. Also some people in theater workshop, which I thought had that kind of mindset, you know. Um, even I was working with Derek, helping him do things, you know. And he, too, could not see me as a, a professional theatrician. That this is what I did my work, you know. I drive up and down the road, go get, take things, go to the library with him, go things, you know. And when uh, we, we, in 74, when he was doing um, Joker Seville, I was helping him do up the budget, and he has... Nigel getting more money than me because I was doing the father and he was doing the lead. I said, okay. So he's the lead. He said, oh, he got more lines than you. I said, so you only pay me for Joker Seville. What about all the shit I'm doing all the time? You know, I work in. I commit myself. He said, oh, you could call yourself a professional if you want. But I can't call myself a professional. I'm not making any money. I said, well, you should go where they're making money. They need you up there. I know that they want him up there. He wasn't dumb. Nobel laureate yet, but I mean, he was well respected. But he was sitting down here and rolling around in the glory about I was the one who didn't, who stayed. I didn't go away. And like those guys, like Naipaul and all the others and who went away. I said, I said, but you're not making money. You should have the guts to go there and make money if it's money. You know? I said, but I, I am demanding that you treat me as a, as a professional. I don't care, I'm not in America, but this is where I am. Okay, right, right, right. So um, I told the, the workshop members, people like who were in charge, that I would be prepared to help because by then they had a row with Derek and he pulled his place, you know, to do my place and so forth. And I said, I would be prepared to do things. I, I see a school for of the arts developing people. 
I said, the, 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 uh, the, 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 the theater in Trinidad is going no place unless there is training. There was no training yet, not up at UE, no, at TTT or anyway. I said, we need com community type of schools where people can come in and get training and, and train by doing and, and so on. Um, so yeah, that's all, that's all good. I said, but all I want from you all is $500 a month because my mortgage is $500 a month. I'll make my gas money and food money and sing by myself. But I need $500. I said, and you don't have to pay me if I don't make it. I said, we will make the money, right? And I want $500. They sat down and had a meeting and decided that they didn't want any professionalism because it would destroy, quote unquote, destroy the roots of what we are, the best in the land. I said, okay, um, what does it sound like, rejection or something, you know? Again? No, I can handle that. I said, um, all right, I'm going up there, up in the east. When all they're ready, call me, <laughs> okay? And that's when you went and buy trucks? I buy truck. I buy my wife, first my wife buy a sofa, a sofa man. Uh, uh, radio alarm, so you know, because oh, oh, shit, I mustn't forget Brenda. When I was in America, going back when and forth in America, she said, um, she had a house, Brenda, Brenda Shillingford, he views, yes, Hugh Shillingford, Henry, whatever. Um, <laughs> she said, if you, I, I'm trying to, she said, I have a house over here, <laughs> and um. If you see any nice furniture and thing, you know, get a picture of it or something for me. Uh, and, uh, da, 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 da. Because at that time, I, I, I developed photo photography while I was on tour, you know, you know, taking pictures. I was quite successful over there, not here. <laughs> when, as a photographer. When I went, my cousin was the, the artistic director of Lonsdale. And he said, boy, I can't hire you. It's a people visual, hire traditionally. And, you know, it's a kind of clique thing, that, that, that. advertising, you know. So, okay. So, I started, I, I, I told her, I said, I, I didn't, I don't remember seeing anything, but if you wanted, why don't you get some boxes, build some boxes, put a cushion on them, paint them nice, and see, and you could butt them up and make a bed, or you could, you know. She said, well, that's a good idea, you know, I said. So I went, and I came back, and I said, you got the boxes, but no, I can't get anybody to build it. I said, well, I'm here now. I mean, I'm here. So you do it for me? I said, yeah, I do it. If you give me any money. So she gave me some money. I don't remember how much. And the first thing I bought was a hand saw. <laughs> and, you know, plane and thing, you know. And I started building the boxes. After I built the first one, she said, um, the first two, somebody seen them and liked them. And would you build for them? She said, mm -hmm. well, ask him now. And I think it was John. John Otway came and asked me, designed for him, you know. And I just started, and I threw my whole self into woodworking and design and all kinds of things, like the woodworking building boxes. I even worked for Col Colvin here, right, didn't I? At Queen's Hall? We did, yeah. Eh? Yeah, that has another career. <laughs> I don't know, I keep going along, you know. And out of the, the woodworking, I had enough money to buy some truck because my brother-in-law had lost his job or because he went on a strike somewhere. And, you know, I said, yeah. and then you buy some fishing boats. And then together with these guys, we bought a big 40-foot pirogue. We, we bought diving equipment and we, we were diving <laughs> and stuff. Uh, I didn't used to dive, you know. I used to rent the diving equipment. And foolishly, I did not insure them and a fellow ripped me off. He rented anything and come back and give me a story. Boy, if you know what happened, the boat sink. <laughs> but I know where it is, you know, I could go back and get it. You know. So we lost about 10,000 worth of tanks and regu regulator and so forth. And so, okay, enough of that. <laughs> so we were doing the boat. And um, John was supposed to take the boat to Tobago um, to carry tourists down on no man's land, <coughs> and then he, he left. I, I built everything on the boat, eh? tanked everything. Uh, 
And when we filled up the tank, we found there was a leak, gas all over the boat. So I said, okay, hold it. I'm going back home, get some drums, pump out all the gas, and find the leak. I know where the leak was, on top of the, <laughs> of the tank. Eh? But I have to empty the tank to, to, to see that. I said, John, wait, I'm coming back. When I came back, about an hour later, John gone. Both gone. <laughs> okay, um, so you, you, you obviously an uh, adventurer. Well, life is an adventure, you know. Does anybody, does anybody have any questions for Alba? What's the most significant to you, of course? The significant? most significant role? Role? Thing you play and, and, and what about playing that role? So well, from a theatrical point of view, yes, uh, as well as from a career point of view, it would have to be Tijan, in which, in which I played the devil plant uh, Papa Boa. It had not been played like that before, and I take a particular pride in accepting, because before it, it used to be played by three different people or something. So. And they'll say, yeah, man, you could do it. You could do it. They'll say, yeah, I could do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a show-off role, you know what I mean? One minute you go, sure. One minute you're dismissed, you, you go to that. You go to that, you know what I mean? And I do it with <laughs> great confidence that everybody likes it, you know? Right. But significantly, from, from a career point of view, was that it took me to America and opened up a whole new career to me, you know? To let me get um, into professionalism and learn about it and so on. And when I learned about that all across America, about not only about the, the profession, but about the people in it, you know? <laughs> yeah. um, anyway. I'm um, sorry, so tell me about your experience of who's afraid of the million world. Oh. I saw you in that many years. Oh. That for me was a difficult play. I thought so. <laughs> it was Albie, eh? It's Albie. Mm. Who's it's a Albie and it's New World. England. It was Helen, myself, Joan Belfort, and Charles Applewhite. I am not sure that the play was served with the best actors. Helen? 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 I think Helen directed it, but she was in it. Um, what what you asked me about it, about the play? It was good. It's the best money I ever got in Trinidad. <laughs> no, I, really, the San Fernando professional women in San Fernando asked us um, to, to stage the play down there. And because there is funds for all kinds of things. And he would come and ask me, um, Albert, how much you want? How much you want? I said, how about 5,000? That wouldn't hurt. I said, okay. 5,000. They paid me 5,000. There's four of us in play. I what, don't know how much the others got. What advice would you give to a young person entering the theater environment and its industry? Yeah? Environment. <laughs> at this time. At this time, I, I was doing mentoring the other day, boy, and I'm leery of giving advice. Yeah. <laughs> I would say, I would question you seriously and ask you, is this what you want to do? If you want to do, do it. It's your life, you know? I went into professional acting at 37, you know, when I quit my job and go away. I wished I'd, I had done it earlier, you know? Um, but... I, like I said, I've been acting, acting, acting all the time in profession, um, hobby, you know, always going and say, doing something. But to make a commitment to put my wife <laughs> and my children and my house and everything on the line, you know, was a commitment. Uh, although I had the guarantee of my chairman, who was my mentor, and said, if it don't work, you have a job back, you know. And when I came, did come back, and he offered me the job, I said, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't go home again. <laughs> you know? 
<laughs> yeah, man. I have to ride this thing to the death. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, about giving him advice, it depends. Look, there was a girl here who went to St. Francois. She got a scholarship. She, she had done some classes with us here. She got a scholarship because she had been in theater. They had given uh, other scholarships and they just had this theater scholarship. And they said, well, you'd been in there, you know? So they gave her the scholarship. She came to us, to me, and told me her father wanted to do, to do medicine or something. So let me tell you something. With the scholarship, you can do anything. You can change it, you know? To you. It is possible. I say, you do way father tell you, eh? I'm telling you. I say, I don't want it to go on a record. I told you, take your scholarship and do theater arts when you could do what your father wanted to do, <laughs> you know? So she went off to England, and I haven't heard from her again. I don't know if she came back, you know? Did she actually go law? Law. What is her name? Do you know? Yeah, yeah. I say whatever. I don't think it's right for me because, and that's what they say, because he made that decision that he can want to tell our children to make the same decision, you know? I mean, I was severely criticized for giving up a good job, which you could only get with a university degree, which I don't have or never had or will never have. And... You know, but I gave the job up. I was a senior manager. And because you had to have a degree for that after 11 years in service, trained in, 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 in all over the world, except to Canada, to England, to, to Africa. And I gave the job up because I told my boss, I hear the beat of a different drama, you know. And he said, I respect that. He was severely criticized for accepting my <laughs> departure too. Um, he don't care. He himself was a closet actor. <laughs> he had been in um, Fire Down Below when they filmed it here. You know, you know what year that was, boy? 50 something years. Yeah, yeah. And it, 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 he was fascinated by the whole thing about making movies and acting and all that kind of thing. And he had a great affection for actors and so on. So he said, you want to go, you go. You go, man. Anybody else has a more question? A significance for, for a community theater spaces? I still, I still think so. It's rooted in the community. It doesn't require of you to have any kind of academic qualifications. To, you walk into that door and you say you want to act. You know? There's a fellow here who's in the advanced class. I know he has very limited academic education. He can't spell very good and his grammar not very good. But He's writing plays in Best Village. But I have not met a more creative guy at writing dialogue that is human and real as that guy. You know? He's a guy with some dreadlocks and no teeth and, you know? He's, he's a real thing. I mean, you read this guy's plays and shit. How can you get a structure of this drama, this, this, this character, the depth of this character? And he has no education that as far as you can see. So I say I'm encouraged that we still keep this place going. I have asked the government to give me the, the old fire station because I want a more decent place for the, um, the next generation of theater workshop people. Pardon? You see, there's one problem with this place. It, it has a stigma. It is in on the doorstep of um, Lavadil, you know, 
Well, yes, but this is why you talk to the people, get on your computer and thing and send to them, and they say, why that place, it, it is safe. I said, of course it is safe. Nothing, we've never lost a car around here. In 11 years. Yeah, but those stigmas have nothing to do with reality. You know? Right, perception. Those stigmas perception. have nothing to do with how things you know? really are. We could never get a full house here. No matter what you do. Full house in here is 60. You know? The best we've had is 48, that kind of thing. You know? I mean, we've had a one-pack house for some odd thing, but, you know, but you would think with the kind of material that we are ready to put in, that the uh, advertising that we do, see, uh, what do you call it, social media and so on, that you could get here full. And I give them free drinks. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know? Any other question? No, you want to go home. No, I just, I just uh, like to say, you talked mm. about July 4th, 1925, right? 1935. 19... 35. 35. 35. 35. 35. 35. 35. 35. 35. 35. 35. 35. 35. 35. 35. 35. 35. 35. 35. 35. 35. 35. 35. 35. 35. 35. 35. 35. 35. 35. 35. 35. 35. 35. 35. 35. 35. 35. 35. 35. Mm. I'd like to say in front of everybody, I pay great respect to you and all that you've done on stage. I thank you. Are you going to do some other production so that, I mean, we could sit here and talk, but if you if the other ones could actually see you on stage, I would like to see you on stage mm -hmm. once more. I ain't yeah. talking more about you, but I'm talking about you. Mm -hmm. The chance of seeing me on stage again like, is becoming a remoter. I think I'm rich for comedy. I think that would be quite a challenge for Albert to do comedy. <laughs> to do what? I, I, think, I, think, I think you should. Yeah. To do what? A challenge to do comedy. I do comedy all the time. But how about, how about you were saying? You were saying something. I said it, it is getting increasingly difficult because I have problems with my feet. I am, I am listed to have an MRI scan in 26th of January because of my spine has taken a kind of your own way. <laughs> and it's interfering with the nerves that control my feet. My feet are numb right now. Mm -hmm. You know? So, look, I, I, turned, I turned on a movie the other day for that, just for that reason. Uh, regrets? I'll tell you why I have no regrets that I are visible. It is because I think, <laughs> I tend to think a lot before I do something. As, you know? And if I do it, then I couldn't do anything else. I cannot regret. I read a book by a man called um, Harry Vinson called How I Found Freedom in an Unfree World. That was the name of the book. <laughs> Very kind of banal. But he talks about all these things. He talks about selfishness. About thinking about yourself. Not doing things for other people, that other people pulling the knobs that you're trying for. He said, scratch a martyr and beneath would be found a solid core of self, selfishness. <laughs> You know, it's things to think about. Because the truly selfish person is a very generous person. You know? He sees himself in other people. You know? And he thinks he thinks about other people. Because they are like him. He thinks about himself. And I think I think deeply about a lot of things before I do any big kind of thing. Sometimes I might say something carelessly that I if I do, I apologize immediately. You know? <laughs> but I cannot think of anything. The one thing that I think I regretted, I, I did when I was 10 years old. 12 years old. 12. 12, 12. I was 12 years old. And it's about that same woman who said that she didn't like children. I wasn't living with her. And we had a family funeral. And I was living in downtown for that. And I saw her coming down. And for some reason, I just walk straight past her. I regret doing that. It is not right. <laughs> it, 
It was not right. It was not right of my 12-year-old self. And I never had any chance to apologize or make up for it. That's the only thing I was thinking about regrets. I was thinking about this when you, long before you talked about it. And um, that's one thing. That's the one thing comes to mind. That nobody should treat people in an inhuman way, you know. You know, there's, I'm, a guide, I'm very much guided by a statement made by Stella Adler of the Stella who founded that thing. The, the, the New York Stella Adler, uh, she said, she said in one of her writings somewhere that theater is the place where a human being who understands his past uses the art to encounter the soul. Can you understand that? It's heavy kind of, but I understood it. If you don't know your past, how can you know who you are? Even who who is you? The essence, the essence of you. You know, because the soul is the essence. It's not something that is painted on your back or hung up in your closet. It's the essence, the who, the essential you. You know, and how do you know that without investigating your past? You know, looking at what I've been, what I've done, what I've thought, what I've dreamt about. And how people have been uh, to me and I meet them, you know, examine your whole past. And I think the theater does that more than anything else I know. <laughs> Any human endeavor that is going on right now. In, our, in theater, we have to look at ourselves, look at the characters we play, the truths of those years people. Do you bring a lot of yourself to your work as an actor? You, I suppose so, you know. Um, I suppose I do. I remember somebody once compared <laughs> me and Stanley Marshall. She said, oh, that one, he, he's only playing himself. He plays himself. I say, who else should I play? You know, like, what else should I play? You know, I am, when I want to find out about a character, I look inside me to see what the similarities are, where I start, you know. Um, and no big thing, it's not hard. I'm an introspective person, I have always been. <laughs> I look into myself, I change. But I like your comedy, I like comedy. I really like comedy. I said that Raymond... Well, that's another, but it's a very subtle comedy, Tartuffe. Tartuffe is a fantastic play. Um, if it was not for Raymond's comedy theater, I don't know what would have the theater in Trinidad right now. I don't know if it would be alive, we'd still have a, a thing, you know? So I think that Raymond is a hero, <laughs> you know? What we're trying to do is to e extract a lot of plays of our experience through Tony Hall. We have to tell our stories. That's what we're trying to do. Which is what we we're trying to encourage the from these uh, conversations. It's all right. It's okay. It's okay. If it's different comedy. Different fractions of the theater would come together and have conversations so that we could make a clear decision as to where we want yeah. to that theater to go. Yeah. And that's why we need to hear Albert speak yeah. and we need to hear other people speak. Yeah. You know, and this is why we do in the theater, the Monday Night Theater. Very nice. Thank you. I just I said about two weeks ago a commercial with this gentleman here, sir. <laughs> and he I mean was a star of the shit the damn thing. And if you see what he brought to the a simple role, you know, I don't know how much coaching or spelling out and so on, but he brought the whole thing to life by his characterization of a guy who is mooting off his parents and making bad deals and money and all kind of, you know? I say, Give them techniques. This man. <laughs> but Michael, Michael, Sherry. Michael Sherry is Michael Sherry is a different. I directed Michael Sherry in the States. Playing who was a, a maid, a, ma, a man servant, 
from Atlanta or something, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Michael, Michael, worked, I, we, we stayed in the same apartment. Michael is one wife. Michael worked ex incessantly, always, really? always. This month of CDs on accents, yes? And Michael working in accents. Michael had to look like if he could play baseball. You could play baseball? Remember the stroke? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? So that we have all kinds of talent here that we don't even know we have. You know? Oh, we always go about balling about how we have the jam. No, and I'm not that talking about something else. You know? Because like I tell people, yeah, I, I've worked all over the world with theater people, and I've never worked anywhere that didn't have talent. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So don't tell me about training yeah, talent. Yeah, yeah. Everywhere have talent. But you where's know? the training? Exactly. The training. The training. Absolutely. Any other questions? I just want to say thank you, Thank you. Oh, hi. Hey. I haven't seen you a long time. I know. I'm around. I'm around. I just did um, some work with my children, and it's due to my experience here in the theater. Mm. Probably the table. We just didn't play for story fest with Auntie Thea. But I do I want I want to say to you thank you for bearing your soul. Again, it's the soul of the actor that makes us all realize who we are, giving a voice to each of us. Yeah. And um, giving us permission to be who we mm. truly would like to share with others but we're afraid to. So I wanna thank you. I wanna thank I wanna thank Tony. And of course Raymond, who directed me once. Um, thank you for doing this, <laughs> Mr. Laird. Thank you. Thank all of you. Thank you. Of December, okay. yes, right here, right here. Oh, and you're right talking here. to Nikki Crosby, oh, Nikki right. in the forum, the kids in the forum, and and after that next year, every second Monday we are in Central Bank, yes, oh, and we have oh, endless. You you'd think of all the theatre people going right back. Well, we had Albert back to Freddie Kisun, who we will have in the forum coming yeah, right through. Soon. Helen Camps, everybody will be in the forum. Everybody. I, I want to appeal to the people that are here tonight to really spread the word because you see how important this is. Yeah. You know, to listen to these people that have gone through and you know all the all the, the you, you see the passion of the <laughs> sensitivity of the man. You know, I mean the young people today I don't think they're aware. I don't think they're aware of, of the commitment yeah. that has to be made. You know, and we need to hear people like Albert speak. Have we we need to hear Cecilia <laughs> speak. No, what are we going to talk about? Oh, yes, well, I have to hear Cecilia. Yeah, give the students a second well. chance to come and hear Albert. I told you to bring your students. I, 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 we, have, we have the video. Have we have the video. Please. 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 Yeah. 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 Yeah.